dear students, in physics in the section measuring equipments or measuring instruments, we already have seen two different instruments. In experiment number one, we have seen how to use a vernier caliper. Experiment number two, we have seen how to use a micrometer screw gauge. Now we are going to see a different uh, instrument which is known as spherometer. Right. So this is an image of a spherometer. Right. Immediately you can see there are two scales here. This is what we call the main scale. Main scale. And this is what we call the circular scale. Circular scale. We had a similar setup in micrometer screw gauge also. Do you remember there was a main scale on the sleeve and on the uh, uh, thimble we had another circular scale a similar thing here right so here also this circular scale let's say there are 100 divisions let's say there are 100 divisions in it 100 divisions when you rotate it one full rotation let's say it goes up or down by one millimeter on the main scale because you know it's a screw here so when you keep spinning it rotating it it will move up or down so, for one full rotation on the main scale, if it moves by one millimeter, then I can see when 100 divisions of the circular scale is rotated, it goes up by one millimeter. So, one division will be one by 100 millimeter. That means for every division you move in the circular scale, the measurement changes by 0 0.01 millimeter. This is what we call the least count of this instrument. Right? You find out when one full rotation for one full rotation is done by how much it moves on the main scale. And in the circular scale, how many divisions are there? Divide those two, that gives you the least count. A similar analysis similar calculation we did in the screw gauge also micrometer screw gauge also right how we are going to use this is very simple now you can see two legs here this is leg number one this is leg number two like this there is another leg on the other side there are three legs i am not referring to the middle one not this one apart from this there are three legs so this spherometer can be balanced or kept on those three legs like this right so first what we do on a plane, right, on an equal level plane, we keep this. And then slowly you rotate this screw and bring down the middle leg. Right, this one, this is in the middle. Slowly bring it down. When you bring it down slowly, at one instance, while the other three legs are resting on the plane, on the same plane, the middle leg also will come and touch. That means all four legs will touch the same plane at an instance. If you keep rotating further, then the middle leg is going to be lengthier. Then what will happen? The spherometer will tilt to a side. Then one leg will not be in contact. Middle leg and any other two legs will be in contact. So that should not happen. I am telling the outer three legs must be in contact with the plane where you have kept this. And then the middle leg also must marginally touch that plane. So at that instance, you get the reading here, reading here. That, that may be zero, that may not be zero. We don't call it a zero error, but actually it has to be zero, but it may not be a zero error. See, this is how we get it. Let's say this is the main scale, zero, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. This is how you are going to have it. Let's say your circular scale, it stays here. Let's say this is where the circular scale stays. That means when all four legs touch the same surface, same plane, the circular scale stays here. So we get the main, main scale reading, see 0, 1. 1 millimeter it has passed. 1 millimeter it has passed. Plus, that's the main scale reading. Now I have to take the circular scale reading. How do we get the circular scale reading? Look at this. When you look from the top, this is how the circle will look like and this main scale I'll just mark as a line here. This is how the main scale will be, right? Because this one, when you look from the top, you'll just see a line. 
Okay. Now, the circular scale will have divisions like this. Right. Now, you need to see which division is aligned with this horizon. That means, which line comes here, that this point. Right. A line, a division will come collinear with the mean scale. Let's say you get 25th division comes in, being coinciding here. 25th division coincides there. Then we can say 1 millimeter on the main scale, 25 into 25 circular scale divisions into 0 0.01. So that will be 1.25 millimeter reading. This is how you get the reading. Right? You read on the main scale and then you find which vernier scale division or circular vernier division is coming collinear with the main scale line and that into least count. So what we do, as I told earlier, first make all four legs on the same plane and get the reading, reading number one. Then what we do, suppose let's say you want to get the thickness of a small, let's say microscope slide, a glass slide, a small one. Let's say you want to measure the thickness. Then what you can do, here you take the slide and keep it in like this. So what you have to do, the middle leg, you have to raise it up. Keep the slide in the middle and then again bring down the middle leg. Now what will happen? The three outer legs are anyway going to rest on the previous plane. But the middle leg when you are lowering it, the middle screw, when you are lowering it, it will come and touch the top surface, upper surface of the slide. It won't go to the same surface earlier because now we have kept the slide. Right. So the other three legs are outside. They are in con contact with the previous surface. Meanwhile, the middle screw that just touches the slide. At that instance, again get the reading. That has to be a reading above this because see, now in between you have kept the slide, right? So it has to be a little up. You may have somewhere here. In the similar format, you measure, get the reading. So if, if it is here, you're going to say 0, 1, 2, 3, 3 plus, And then you have to check the circular scale that into 0 0.01. So this reading, minus previous reading, this gap has to be the thickness of whatever the object we have kept there. Do you understand? This is how we measure the thickness. A very simple one. Very simple one. This is how we measure the thickness. Right? Okay. In addition to measuring the thickness of small objects, there is another advantage of this. Another advantage means if you have a part of a sphere, like let's say a lens, a surface of lens is a curved surface, right? It will look like a part of sphere. So if we get a part of a sphere, if we get a curved surface, then we can use this and find the radius of curvature of this surface. There has to be a center somewhere, right? Which we don't know, right? Which we don't know. If you take a clock glass, clock glass is a curved surface, right? So it is a curved surface. It is a part of a full sphere. We don't see the sphere. We just see that small part only. It has to have the center somewhere. From that center to this glass, the distance is going to be the radius, radius of curvature. That also we can calculate. We can't directly measure, but we can take a couple of measurements and we can calculate. I'll show you how we are going to calculate, concentrate. Usage of the spherometer, finding the thickness of microscope slide, finding the radius of curvature of a spherical surface. Right? These are the two main uses of this. This I explained. I'm going to explain this. Materials and apparatus, spherometer, a plain piece of glass. I told you like we keep all three legs on the same plane. So that plane, we usually take a glass block. Right? I'll tell you later like why we keep the glass block. I'll tell you now. See. Now you, you have kept the spherometer already three legs are resting on the other one is behind. I'm not drawing that. Now the middle screw, it was not touching it. Slowly you're going to bring it down and you're going to find the first moment it touches the glass surface. How do we ensure that? Now see, when we look from here, we will be able to see the image of this screw inside the glass block. How is that possible? It's a glass block. It's not a mirror. It's a glass block. But how is it possible? 
from air into the glass when the light rays go in from air to glass light rays can penetrate but even though they penetrate not 100 percentage of light rays will penetrate out of the intensity of light that falls on the surface maybe around 80 percentage 85 percentage will penetrate and it will go into the glass block a small percentage like 15 20 percentage of light intensity that gets reflected we call it partial reflection partial reflection right there will be a partial reflection happening at this point so you will see a blurred image not very clear image not like the image you see in a mirror but a blurred image you can see why do i need the image see now when this screw doesn't touch the surface look at the screw and its image there is a gap right there is a gap the screw and the image wouldn't touch each other what will happen when the screw is lowered when the screw touches a position like this then what will happen to the image from this surface the object distance and the image distance have to be same that means now for the object there is no distance which means image also must be here now what happens the object the screw and its image are going to touch they are going to be in contact so you have to closely observe it when you lower the screw the gap between screw and its image will become lower and lower less gap less gap less gap at one point they are going to touch the moment they touch you can stop lowering it then you can say now the screw touches the surface that's how we identify when the screw touches the surface that's why rather than taking any other plane we prefer a glass block because this partial reflection happens and there will be an image right so that's what this is an optically flat plane piece of glass microscope slide that is to measure the thickness a clock glass we are going to take a clock glass which is a curved like a lens like glass piece we are going to find the radius of curvature for that meter ruler while doing the experiment or like while we do the calculations i will show you why meter ruler is required theory if the screw pitch of the spherometer is x and the number of divisions of the circular scale is y then least count is x over y that i told you screw pitch means when one full rotation comes how much it goes up in other words gap between two screws like there will be like threads right threads on the threads only it, it rotates so the gap between two threads is what you call screw pitch right screw pitch of the spherometer is x and the number of divisions of the circular scale is y then least count is x over y which i already explained now this is about that radius of curvature look at this try to understand what this is these are the three outer legs of the spherometer when we keep the spherometer three legs are going to be like this i have known it magnified it will be a small apparatus small instrument but i have i have magnified and drawn this so what is this point this is where the middle screw is going to come middle screw is going to come right okay what i need to know here see if i if i take the gap between two legs as a usually that has to be equilateral that means this side will be a this side also will be a if at all if there's an error in the instrument there can be a small difference but more or less it has to be equal right then can we find the distance from one leg to the screw that will be okay let me mark it as x x let me draw a perpendicular if you draw this line straight it will be perpendicular because it has to be symmetric symmetric you know equilateral triangle this has to be altogether 60 then this has to be 30 half 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 symmetric right 30 30 30 30 in this small triangle can you tell me how cos 30 will be cos 30 cos 30 has to be adjacent side so altogether it's a so this much will be a by 2 a by 2 hold on this proof they will never ask you but i'm just explaining if you are curious to know how this equation comes because what matters is finally this equation so even you can memorize this equation but in the exam if this equation is required they even give this formula 
you just substitute and get the answers. But then learning with the right understanding is always better. So I'm going to show you how this formula has been derived. Okay. Right. So cos 30 is going to be adjacent side over hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is x. Hypotenuse is x. Maybe if you have not studied mechanics yet, you might not have studied this trigonometry and all. Right. Later when you study mechanics, I have already explained everything in, in mechanics. So at the point when you learn mechanics, you will, you will, you can come back, you can revisit this area, sine, cos, tan, all trigonometry has been explained there. Clear? Right. So cos that is going to be A by 2. Uh, adjacent side divided by hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is x. Cos 30, the value is root 3 by 2. A, 2x. Two, 2, 2 cancel, x goes up. A over root 3. So if the distance between the two legs is A, then the distance from one leg to the screw will be a by root 3. a by root 3. Clear? Right. Keep it aside. Now, this is the curved surface. And this is how we have kept the spherometer. You can see one leg here, another leg there. The screw is here. Screw is here. Right? Now, when we bring down the screw, right? Earlier, what did we do? The three legs, screw, everything was in the same plane. That means screw would have come up to this point. When we took the reading one, screw was here. Now what we do? On the curved surface, you keep one leg here, one leg here, and the middle screw here. Another leg is behind. This is how you are getting this reading. That means screw is here. So if you get the difference between first reading and second reading, when I do the experiment, I will explain this again. When we get the difference between first reading and second reading, that's going to give you this gap, which is what we mark as H, that gap, right? And so this is where the screw gets down. This is one leg. That means from leg to screw, this distance is what we already measured X, which is A by root 3, A by root 3. Assume the center of curvature is here. Assume the center of curvature is here. Here, don't think that these three are going to be in the same straight line. Huh? This leg is somewhere behind because where, see, the legs are like this. This is where screw comes down. So, one leg, screw and another leg will not come on a straight line. Huh? When you look at it on a two dimension, it looks like that. See, when you are looking from here, somebody looking from here will see only this, this and this. Or somebody looking from here might see these two legs and the screw. So it might look like they are on a straight line. They are not on the same straight line. Huh? This is not same straight line. This is a broken line. This is going in and coming out. See, going in and coming out. That's like that. So I'm talking about this part. This is what the x a by root 3. If this is the center of curvature, this is r. That's what you are find. Radius of curvature. If this is r, this is also radius altogether. It has to be r. Of that, this is h. Then the balance has to be r minus h. Now look at this. This is a right angle triangle. Shall we call Pythagoras here? Uh, call Pythagoras. What does Pythagoras say? The square of hypotenuse, square of hypotenuse should be equal to the sum of square of the other two sides. Sum of square of other two sides. Sum of square of are the two sides. Solve this and find r that should give you this. Let's check r squared equals a squared by 3. Root 3 squared is 3. r squared minus 2rh plus h squared. r squared, r squared cancelled. Bring the 2rh here. a squared by 3 plus h squared. Now divide by 2h. So, r is going to be a squared over 2h goes down, it will become 6h. H squared, h will be cancelled, another h will remain h by 2. That's what this equation is. So, to find the radius of curvature, what and what measurements you need, one is h, one is a. Let's go back and see what is a. A is the distance between two legs. So, how do we measure a? 
you simply take a white paper, A4 paper, keep this ferrometer, maybe you can raise the middle, middle screw, raise it up, other three, just press it on the paper, right? Then you can see the marks made by these three legs. Just take your meter ruler and measure the gap. You will see marks like this. One, two, three. When you press it, you can see this. Then keep your meter ruler and measure this. Measure this. Measure this. All three must be equal. Suppose if there is difference in that, get the average. If those three are not the same, get the average of it. But technically, it has to be equal. Technically, it has to be equal. But if it is not equal, get the average. That's going to be A. And what is H? What is H? Here, this is H. That means, first you keep all four legs. That means three legs and the screw in the same plane. Get the reading. Then keep it on the curved surface such that all four legs touch the surface. It is not plane surface. It is a curved surface. Then you will get another reading. First reading, second reading difference will be this H. So, you know H. You know A. Substitute here. You will get the radius of curvature. This is why we call this instrument as spherometer. Because if you get a part of a sphere, you can find the radius of it. If you get a part of a sphere, you can still find the radius of it. You call it spherometer. Clear? Right. So let's see how we are going to measure the thickness of microscope slide. Find the least count of the spherometer. That's what we do to any measuring instrument. That's the first thing we do. Place the three legs of the spherometer on the plain glass surface and screw the central leg until its tip touches the glass surface. This can be done by making the screw tip to come into contact with its own image formed by partial reflection on the glass surface. Clear? That I explained. Obtain and note down the reading corresponding to the position of the screw tip using the readings of vertical scale and the circular scale. Right? That's simple. Then what do we do? Raise the screw a little and insert the microscope slide on the glass surface below. So, insert the microscope. Turn the screw until the screw tip touches the upper surface of the, of the slide and observe the reading. Same thing. Same thing I explained. Take similar readings on three spots. Don't forget that. The thickness may not be uniform. So, don't stop it at one point. Get the measurement at multiple points and get the average thickness. Yes. So, take similar readings on three spots of the slide. Record the difference between the readings obtained on the plain glass surface and these three readings and then get the averages, that should give you the thickness. That's about the thickness. Now, radius of curvature of a spherical surface. How do we measure that? Place three legs of the spherometer on the spherical surface. Before that, we should have already kept it on the same glass surface and got the reading. Right? After that only we are coming here and adjust the screw for the screw tip to touch the spherical surface. Observe the relevant reading and record the difference between the reading and the reading on the plain glass surface as H. Place the spherometer on a paper and press on it. Measure using the meter ruler the distance between the marks made by the spherometer legs on the paper, which we are going to take as A. And then what's the formula? R equals A squared by 6H plus H by 2. So we apply this. We should get the radius of curvature. Clear? So this is what simply about spherometer. Nothing much complicated on that. Now let's take a spherometer and see whether we can get these readings. The main apparatus that we are using is this spherometer. Look at the shape of the spherometer. I'll explain later how to use this, but this is the spherometer. And then we are using a glass block with a flat surface. This is the microscope strip or microscope slide you see. We will be finding the thickness of this. And this is the clock glass of which we are going to find the radius of curvature. These are the apparatus. Let's first see how. Right. So see, first I'll show you how to measure the height or thickness or anything. You can see the spherometer has three legs. Can you see? One, two, and there is another one here, three. There are three legs. And there is one screw in the middle. That is movable. See, when I rotate this, it goes up. You can see, look at this tip, screw tip, right? When I, when I rotate this, it goes further and further up. Can you see? The gap has increased here. The gap has increased. Similarly, if I rotate it the other way, it goes down. Now the gap has reduced. 
that way the the middle screw the the we call it screw tip the screw tip can be moved up or down by rotating this first what we do we keep it on a plane surface that's why i have taken this glass block with a plane surface or flat surface and then i have to rotate the screw until the screw tip just touches the surface that means when that when that screw tip touches the surface all four tips will touch the surface that means the three legs of this spherometer and the middle screw tip all four should just touch the surface at that point i'll get the reading i'll show you later how we are going to get the reading but that's how we get the first reading we don't call it a zero error we don't have uh, the name zero error here but actually it is zero error because it has to be at zero if it is not at zero it is zero error but we don't call it zero error we call it reading one then what do we do whatever the height that we want to measure or thickness or height that we want to measure that object you keep in the middle like this then tighten the screw such that the screw tip touches the upper surface of this object here i have kept a glass slide all other three tips or three legs they touch the previous surface itself now get the second reading first reading second reading difference will give you the thickness or the height of the object that you have used here that's all the simple concept is and how do we get the readings look at this here we have a vertical scale we have a vertical scale here that's a main scale that is the main scale and here we have a circular scale here that is the vernier scale right in this spherometer the circular scale have 100 divisions in it 100 divisions in it right and when i rotate this circular scale one full rotation it goes up by up or down by 1 mm that's what we call pitch so pitch of this spherometer is 1 mm right similarly if you look at the main scale the readings are given millimeter by millimeter we have zero here then 1 mm 2 mm likewise it goes up right so main scale is given in millimeters and the circular scale or vernier scale has 100 divisions in it and when i do one full rotation it goes up or down by 1 mm so pitch is 1 mm 100 divisions are there you divide it 1 mm by 100 0.01 mm is the least count of this spherometer the minimum distance that we can measure with this spherometer that's what you call least count least count of this spherometer is 0.01 mm first step is that finding the least count of a spherometer how do we find it see just keep it at zero right and see where it shows in the main scale and then do one full rotation again see where it shows in the main scale see why how much it has changed in main scale so when i do one full rotation here it goes up by 1 mm right so 1 mm 100 scales we can say 0.01 is the uh, uh, least count of this spherometer right after finding the least least count i'm going to get the reading one what is reading one all four tips that means the three legs of the spherometer and the the three three legs of the spherometer see 1 2 3 three tips of the spherometer and the screw tip screw tip means the middle one all four should marginally touch marginally touch the flat surface so how do we ensure that the screw tip touches the middle surface because already the other three legs touch the surface how do we ensure the screw tip also touches the surface can you see the tip and it has an image down there tip and the image now there is a gap between those two they don't touch each other can you see that this is the screw tip and the image is down there what is that image there is a partial reflection that happens on the glass surface on the top surface of the glass there is a partial reflection 
because of that partial reflection i am able to see an image of all the objects on top of it that's how i see the image of the tip as well so when i screw this and bring down the screw tip the image and the screw tip will become closer and closer right the image image and the screw tip will become closer and closer and when the screw tip touches the surface both image and the screw tip will touch each other they will be in contact that's how we ensure the first time when the screw tip touches the surface do you understand why we have used the glass block now if we have used another surface let's say the table top or something then you won't be able to see that partial reflection in the image right that's why we use this glass block a mirror might also do the same but still we don't prefer a mirror here i'll tell you the reason in the mirror where the reflection happens is the bottom surface of the mirror we will have the the coating ha uh, on that coating only the reflection happens the mirror thickness there there is a small thickness to the mirror right might be few millimeters 2 mm or 3 mm thickness is there so you keep the tip on on the top surface whereas reflection doesn't happen on the top surface reflection happens in the bottom surface of the mirror right in a mirror the the reflection happens on the surface where the coating is there then where your tip touches the mirror and where the reflection actually happens in the mirror there will be always a gap that is the thickness of the mirror so you will never be able to see the tip and the and the image touching each other that's why a mirror is not so preferable in this occasion we use a glass block where on the top surface itself the reflection happens you can actually use the polished metal surface as well but we have to ensure it's flat there is no curvature or anything then you can use a metal surface as well right so now you can see the image and the tip do not touch each other so i'm going to screw it so that the tip goes down until image and the tip touch each other you can see the gap reduces it comes closer and closer the gap reduces between the tip and the image there you go at that instance at that instance the tip and the image they touch each other at this position they are in contact they are in touch which means i can ensure the the surface and the tip are in contact make sure you don't continue to screw this then what will happen the other three will start coming up then you won't get all four tips touching the surface the first time where you see the screw tip and its image touch each other you have to stop it right at this position let's get the reading that what we get that will be the reading one right so now let's see how i am going to get the reading of it in the main scale it has just passed the zero line but it has not passed the first division it's in between 0 and 1 so you know the answer has to be 0 point something not 1 point because it has not passed 1 it's in between 0 and 1 0 point then check the circular scale circular scale circular scale is at 5 we already found the least count to be 0.01 mm five divisions of circular uh, scale means 5 into 0.01 that is 0.05 mm 0.05 mm right so main scale 0 circular scale 0.05 then it will be 0.05 the reading actually it has to be zero but it is not zero means it, it, it has to be a zero error because when all four are in the same surface it has to be zero but we don't call it a zero error we call it reading one 0.05 mm is the reading one we get what do we do after that we are going to keep the glass slide in between or under the under the tip uh, screw tip and then tighten the screw tip until it touches the top surface of the glass strip 
and get the second reading. Reading 1, reading 2 difference will be the uh, uh, thickness of the glass strip. So, let us see how I am going to keep the glass strip under the screw tip. Let me loosen the screw tip and we will take it up. Right, I have kept the glass strip underneath and the same principle, what are we going to do? We are going to rotate it so that the other three legs or other three tips touch the previous surface itself and the middle screw tip should touch the upper surface of this glass strip. And how do we ensure it touches? The images. Now you can see the images do not touch here, there is a gap, there is a gap, see. Let me lower the screw tip. Now you all can see the, the image and the tip, they are in contact, which means the tip touches the upper surface of the glass strip. You have to be careful, there might be multiple images you see, the image created by this glass strip and then when image created by the glass block as well, you have to ensure image created by the glass strip and the middle screw tip, they are in contact, right. Now let me get the reading. So if I get the reading now, this reading and the previous reading difference will give me the thickness of this glass strip. The main scale, it has passed 1 millimeter and it has not passed 2 millimeter. So it has to be in between 1 and 2, 1 point something is going to be the reading. And uh, the reading on the circular scale, it is at 6th division, 6th division is coinciding with the main scale. That means 6 into 0 0.01, that is 0 0.06 millimeters. So on the main scale 1 millimeter, on the circular scales 0 0.06 millimeter, it is altogether 1.06 millimeters. This is the reading too. Previous reading was 0 0.05 millimeter. So you subtract it 1.06 minus 0 0.05, the thickness is going to be 1.01 millimeters, right. I have taken at one, one point of this glass strip. You can take it at multiple different points, the thickness and get the average, right. So this is how you use the spherometer to find the thickness of a glass strip or any similar object. Next we are going to see how we are going to use this spherometer to find the, to find the radius of curvature for a clock glass, right. So what do we do? You take the spherometer, right, raise the screw tip, raise it up, raise it up, keep it like this. So now what happens? The spherometer is resting on the curved surface, the three legs of the spherometer, they are in contact with the surface. The screw tip is not in contact, you can see there is a gap here. You can see there is a gap here, it is not in contact. What are we going to do? Let us lower the screw tip and make it in contact with the curved surface, get the reading. The first reading 0 0.05 and the reading now difference will give you the height. Height means from the, from the plane of these three, the tips how much height the middle point is, that is what we usually mark it as h, right. I will explain you. The radius of curvature can be uh, proven to be using Pythagoras theorem, we can, we can prove that to be r equals, r is the radius of curvature, r equals a squared over 6h plus h by 2, a squared over 6h plus h by 2. h means how much height, that is what I am going to get now, reading number 1, third reading, the difference. That means from the, from the plane of these three, the middle tip, how much it is raised up, that is h. And what is a, the gap between these two tips? Actually, it has to be equal wherever, whichever the two legs, the gap you measure, it has to be equal. If it is not equal, there might be small differences sometimes, you get the average of it, right? that is a. 
6, uh, a squared by 6 h plus h by 2 will give you the radius of curvature. So, to measure h, let me find the point where, where, where the tip, screw tip touches the surface. Same concept we are going to use, lower the screw tip until it touches with the image created there. So, how do we ensure that the screw tip touches the curved surface? Same concept, the, the image that, that, that is created by the curved glass surface should touch the screw tip. The moment they are in contact, then they can, you can ensure it touches. So, the first time you see that, then you have to stop it, right? Do not keep screwing further, then it will not be in balance. Now, you can see there is a gap here, right? The screw tip and the image do not touch each other. So, let me, let me screw it further. Now you can see the, the screw tip and its image touch each other, they are in contact. That is the first moment I got them in contact which means now all four tips, that means the three legs and the screw tip, they all touch the curved surface. If I can get the reading now and subtract it with the first reading where I got all four on the same flat surface, if I subtract it, then I can get the edge, right? So let us get the reading now. On the main scale, it has just passed 1, 1 millimeter, but it has not gone to 2 millimeter. So, it is in between 1 and 2. The answer has to be 1 point something. And on the circular scale, the 12th section, 12th division of the circular scale is in line with the main scale. That means 12 into least count 0 0.01, that is 0.12 millimeters. So, altogether reading is 1.12 millimeter, right? This is not H. This minus the first reading where all four were in the same flat surface, we got 0 0.05 reading, 1.12 minus 0 0.05, 1.07 millimeter is the answer for H we get. Then to find the curvature of radius, we need the distance between the legs as well. How do we do that? We are going to impress this, we are going to press this on a white sheet, white paper, get those impressions of three legs and find the gap between those legs. Or you can even use the vernier caliper to find it, but I think it is okay to use a meter ruler. It is mentioned you can either use vernier caliper or meter ruler. If you are using meter ruler, pressing it on a white paper, getting those impressions, the dots and then getting the gap will be better. So, let us see how we are going to get that now. See how we do this, take your spherometer, right? Keep it in the middle of a white paper and press it. Take it out. I can see the impressions, but I will make a mark with a pencil so that you can see the impressions clearly. Right, those are the three dots or three impressions we have got. Now, let us get the measurement. Actually, if you measure whichever the gap, it has to be equal, but sometimes there might be a small difference. Let us find it. Here we have 3.1 centimeter. Here we have 3.1 centimeter, which is 31 millimeters. Let me write that. Thirty-one millimeter. Let's measure the other gap. Here we have three point two centimeters. That is thirty-two millimeters. Thirty-two. Let me get the third one as well. That is at 3 centimeters, that means 30 millimeters, 3 centimeters. 
So if you get the average of all these three, 30, 31, 32, the average is 31 millimeters. Average is 31 millimeter. So that's the answer for A we have got. A is 31 millimeters. Already we have got H. So you apply in the equation R. R is the radius of curvature. R equals A squared by 6H plus H by 2. When we substitute these values into that, we can find out the radius of the clock glass that we have used, right? So is that clear for you how we use the spherometer to find the thickness and to find the radius of curved surfaces? So in the measuring equipments, first we have seen the vernier caliper, then we have seen the micrometer screw gauge. Now I have shown you in this experiment how to use a spherometer. Study this well, whichever the question that come, comes within this, you must be able to answer in the exam if you practice this well. Next, we will again see another measuring equipment in your syllabus. All right, students. Now, the readings I have taken uh, to find the radius of curvature, I have written here. First reading, this is the reading where all four legs were in the same surface, same glass surface, same plane surface, 0 0.05. This is where the legs were kept on the curved surface, curved surface. So the difference between these two is what we say h subtracted we get 1.07 millimeter. This is what is a. So what is the formula I gave you for r? a squared over 6h plus h by 2. a squared 31 squared 6 into 1.07 plus 1.07 by 2. 31 squared, 31, 93, 961. So, 961 has to be divided by 6 into 1.01 1 .01 is 642. Ah, 6.42, I will put two zeros here, 642. 1, 642. Hmm. 9, 5, 4, 1, 3. 5 is not enough. 4. 8, 16, 25. Then you will have 10, 8, 2, 8, 6, 2, 11, 5, 6. So that's going to be 14.9, isn't it? 14.9. 18, 36, 37. 54, 57, 2, 4, 5, 5, 4, 2, 0 means it is going to be again around 8, 14.98 means approximately 15, so it is approximately 15 millimeters, am I right? 642, no the decimal has to be one more, isn't it? One zero is here, another zero. We got 149 after that only 8. Check that. Because 6 times to 900 has to be around 150. Yeah. So it's not 15 millimeter, it's around 150 millimeter. 150 millimeter. So that we can say 15 centimeters. Understand? So this is how we get the uh, radius of curvature for a curved surface using spherometer. This part can only be done by spherometer. You can't do this with vernier, vernier caliper, no. You can't do this with micrometer screw gauge, no. Only with spherometer you can find the radius of curvature for curved surfaces. That's why it has got the name spherometer, spherometer, right. The thickness, of course, you can measure with anything, right. Micrometer screw gauge also has similar accuracy. So, thickness of say the glass slide, you can measure with this or the other one. But curvature radius, you can't measure with others. Clear? So, that's all about this simple instrument of measurement. Now, let's see the past paper questions that have come in this experiment. Right. Let's see a past paper question on spherometer. Look at this. This is from 2011 paper. Figure 1 shows a spherometer used in a laboratory. Number of divisions in the circular scale is 50. 
linear progress made by the circular scale on the vertical scale on two complete rotations is one millimeter. When you rotate it twice, it goes up by one millimeter. When you rotate it twice, when you rotate once, 50 circular scales will be completed, circular divisions. Another rotation, another 50 divisions. So, 100 circular divisions will go up by 1 millimeter. So, that will help you to find the least count. Let us see. Spherometer is used to determine the radius of curvature of the curved surface of a uh, plano concave lens. In such a determination, spherometer is placed on the, on the curved surface of the lens as shown in the figure 2. After obtaining the measurements H and B, which are shown in the figure H and B, see H, H is the height from the level of all those three legs, how the middle screw is up, this is H, see, this is H. B is the gap between the two legs of the spherometer. After obtaining the measurements H and B, which are shown in the figure, the radius of curvature R can be determined by the following formula. They have given the formula also. All right. What is the least count of this spherometer? I said two rounds, 100 for 1 millimeter. 0 0.01 millimeter. That means when one division on the circular scale is moved, the vertical movement of the spherometer of the screw is 0 0.01 millimeter, 0 0.01 millimeter, very small. Before placing the spherometer on the curved surface, it has to be adjusted by placing it on a flat glass plate. How do you experimentally make sure that the tip of the screw just touches the glass plate? How do we ensure the tip of the screw and its image from reflection must, must become in touch. For the first time when they, when they touch each other, you know it is uh, the screw touches the glass plate. So, you can see the tip of the screw and its image on the glass plate. should in contact for the first time, for the first time huh? because after that if we keep screwing it, if we, if we keep ro uh, rotating it, still it will be in contact. Now after that what will happen? The other legs will become up, right. So for the first time when it touches, then only you can ensure, okay, now all three legs are also resting on the glass surface. And the screw also touches it. Basically, four points of contact have to be there. Four points of contact. What? The three legs which were already, on contact, already in contact and the screw just marginally touches. Then the spherometer is placed on the curved surface of the lens. What adjustment would you make before taking the measurement in order to determine H? Let us see. What is H? This is H. This is H. So, what do you have to do? You have to screw it right bring it down when it touches here then you can take the reading when it touches there we can take the reading yes they are asking what adjustment what is the reading that you would take from the spherometer after the above mentioned adjustment okay so what we have to do the screw will be rotated until The tip of the screw, tip of the screw touches, touches the lens surface for the first time. What is the reading that you would take from the spherometer after the above mentioned adjustment? After that, what do you do? Either you can count how many times you rotate it and the circular division that is in line with the vertical division. If you did not count it, you can get the reading on the vertical scale and 
which division of the circular division, circular scale is in line with the vertical line. So we can say the reading on vertical scale and reading on vertical scale and the division of the circular scale circular scale that is in line with vertical scale next after extensive use the reading taken from the vertical scale may not be so accurate in some spherometers what's the reason for this what will happen the screw will become loosened it will it will not be tight enough so what will happen look at this if this is how the screw has to be and let's say this is where you are holding it it rotates right this rotates now you can rotate it what will happen at this place it will become loosened it will not be tight enough if it is not tight enough what will happen the screw instead of being vertical it can a little bit get angled look at this the middle line can come like this can you see it can get angled like this so what is the problem when it gets angled look the indicator if the indicator was like this now at the same level here the indicator is going to be also a little bit angled can you see the indicator when it stays straight first one is the correct one when it is a little bit angled why does it get angled because the screw with this nut it is not tight enough it is not tight enough why is that when you use it again and again and again and again continuously for a longer period there might be wear and tear right then it will not be as tight as it, it was right then this you can see like when you when you do the experiment you will understand there is a little bit of you know loose connection there it doesn't stay rigid it it is it is free to move a little bit right then this kind of error can come to you so that's what they are asking here when you use it for a longer time what will happen it, it may not be accurate yes because of this issue the screw the screw will become loosened and may not remain on a vertical plane always it gets angled a little bit in order to determine r you need to measure the mean distance between the spherometer legs what measuring instrument would you use to determine b what did we do we use the foot ruler right meter ruler or foot ruler would be okay right meter ruler or foot ruler what experimental steps would you follow in order to determine b what did we do we kept the spherometer on a white paper we just pressed it made the marks of three legs and then we took the spherometer off measured the distance got the average correct so let's say place the spherometer on a white paper press it and make or mark the three legs on the paper remove the spherometer
measure the distances between the legs and get the average. Right, it's like this. You will have three points like this. Measure this distance, this one, and this one. Three distances you will measure. Ideally, it has to be equal, but there can be slight differences. So, if you have slight difference, average it out. Give another use of a spherometer except the measurement of radius of curvature. We have done that to measure the thickness of, let's say, small glass strip. Yeah, to measure the thickness. To measure the thickness. But there has to be a small thing, right? Thickness of glass slide. Suggest the method to further decrease the least count of the spherometer given above. How can you further decrease the least count here? Couple of ideas are there. One, the circular scale that was divided into 50 divisions. Now, same circular scale, maybe you can print it bigger and divide that into more divisions, not 50, make it more, make it 100. Earlier we had, you said, okay, two rotations, it goes up by one millimeter, right? So the least count was one millimeter over two into 50. That's how we got it. Now you have two options. One, increase this. Don't have 50 divisions in it, make it 60, 70, 80. Then the least count will become smaller and smaller, right? Or else, you have to decrease this. That means after two rounds, it came down by one millimeter, right? Make the screws like the, the threads very compact. Make the threads closer to each. So that after two rounds, it doesn't come by one millimeter. It comes by less than that. Because you are going to have the screws like this. Look at this. How do you have the uh, screws? So what will happen if you can reduce the gap between two threads? If you can make it closer, it's very difficult because then you need to use different machinery and all that. But then if you can reduce that gap, then after one rotation, how much it comes down will be less. Understand? So we can do those two. They are asking, give two ideas to reduce the least count further. Suggest a method. Suggest a method. Okay. Only one method to further decrease the least count. So let's say increase the number of divisions. Number of divisions in the circular scale. You can write that. If not, the other answer you can say. Reduce the gap between the threads and ensure less distance is gone when one full rotation is gone. Earlier for two full rotations, it was one millimeter vertical movement, right? Reduce it. Reduce it. After two movements, make it less than one millimeter. Then the least count is going to be smaller. Right? So those are the two common methods used by manufacturers to improve the least count. But it's, it's difficult. Beyond a point, you can bring the threads closer. You can't. It's very difficult. Right? But then if you can do it, that's what the idea would be. Clear? Right. So that's all the 2011 paper on this experiment spherometer. Quite simple. If you had been watching what we do, it's very simple. But remember, the measuring instruments can come as a separate structure question in the exam. Don't forget that. So pay enough attention on measuring instruments because why I am telling this is, when you start studying physics on your first first few months of physics, you will be like very focused and you know, you will you'll study each and everything very carefully. After you have studied majority of syllabus, let's say in the when you are in the last six months of syllabus, you have completed everything, right? You have done uh, basics, measurements, then mechanics, light, sound, heat, electricity, electronics, properties of matter. Once you have done all that, students tend to focus on like the big, big chapters. And sometimes they lose the focus on these small areas like measurements, measuring instruments. It might look like, ah, that's very simple. I know that. There's nothing much in it. Let me focus on fields. 
feels is a bit complicated. It's not, I'm just telling. So, you might have less focus on areas like measuring instruments. And you might miss to practice these kind of things before going to the exam. You might have focused on all those complicated experiments in, let's say, light, complicated experiments in heat. You would have practiced all that. But this you might not, you might not have practiced at the last moment. When you go to the exam and you see this, you get a surprise. You get shocked. Oh, I, I did all other 40 experiments, but this one I didn't do. So don't do that mistake. Even measuring instrument can be tested as a separate complete structure question. Right, you have seen that. Right, so please practice this very well and you know understand everything. Pay equal attention to all the experiments. All of them are testable. All of them are testable. Don't just you know play around with the probabilities. Don't, don't, don't take chances. Be on the safe side. Practice all the experiments very well when you are practicing. Right? Cool. So that's all about this experiment. Practice this. We'll meet up with another experiment, another measuring instrument in the next experiment.